Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our bridging service. We are gathered both virtually and in person as, we, as a connected community. I am Eva Leventer. My pronouns are she, her, and I will be your worship leader this morning's service. And I am joined here by Reverend Julie Brock and Alex Myers. If you are a visitor online and would like Northwest to stay in touch with you, please fill out the visitor form appearing in the chat box. If you are with us in person, you can fill out the visitor sign in form in the atrium. Please greet your neighbor with a wave from wherever you are. We have a few announcements to share with you. You'll find more information about Northwest in its events and weekly newsletter and on our website. Next week, our service will be led by Barbara Wallace at Northwest UU. And also there is a Pride, Motor City Pride March in Detroit. So if you're interested in, in marching in the Motor City Pride March, um, uh, contact Julie Brock. And also after the service, we will be having a <laughs> Thank you. A congregational meeting. Did you get it? I, I don't hear myself, so I think it's good. Thank you. Um, and there will be some uh, cake and some lunch um, for people so you can bring your food in the sanctuary. Did it work? Okay, before we begin the prelude, it, let's take a deep breath and settle into a time of worship. Thank you, Xander, for bringing that to us. Why did we have a prelude today that was a video chosen by Xander? Because today we are doing one of the most important things that Unitarian Universalist congregations do. We are bridging our seniors, which means today we are forming the bridge that brings them from youth to adulthood. We are witnessing them and blessing them on their way. And it's a really cool ritual in and of itself, but it means so much more because we are sending today three human beings out into the world that have been raised with the values, wisdom, stories, memories, and connections of this community. As someone who was raised Unitarian Universalist myself, I cannot tell you the impact it had on me growing up, being told from my very birth that I was whole and worthy just as I was and interdependently connected to all that was. So today, we're celebrating the hard work and the joyous gift that community is. I would like to invite the parents of the three bridging seniors up to light the chalice.
The chalice lighting is by Beatrice Hitchcock called May the Flame Burn True and High and Strong. The flaming chalice is the symbol of Unitarian Universalism. It is an everlasting flame for this community. It offers its warmth to those who are cold. It provides light to those who would see. It purifies and transforms this sanctuary into sacred space, this congregation into sacred community. May its flame burn true and high and strong. Each week, we offer a land acknowledgement. We honor and pay our respects to the land on which we work, which was violently stolen through colonialism, genocide, and forced removal of its traditional stewards. These stewards are the Anishinaabek, the Council of the Three Fires, which include the Ottawa, Ojibwe, and Potawatomi, also known as the Ottawa, Chippewa, and Potawatomi tribes. We also acknowledge the people of African descent who were forcibly removed from their land and separated from their families through kidnapping and enslavement, and pay reverence and respect to them for building the country's infrastructure and economy with no compensation or reparations to date. You are now invited to rise and body and or spirit and join me in singing hymn 1074, Turn the World Around.
So we have a story for all ages is going to be a game today. And um, Dwight Robinson decided he wanted to do a game. So we are doing this game for you today. And uh, we have all the elements of this service picked out by the seniors. So we did met with them and they picked them out. So let me introduce the game. So this is called True Truths and a Lie. And uh, I'm going to read three statements about a senior, and you have to guess which one is a lie. So raise your hand if you have a guess and speak loudly. We're going to start with Xander Weiss. Number one, has spray painted school property? Number two, cilantro tastes like soap to him. And number three, knows how to tie a bow tie. No. Yes. Bingo. You got it. Okay, next one for Xander. <laughs> yeah. Number two. Share shares a birthday with Donald Trump. Sorry, number one. Shares a birthday with Donald Trump. Number two, has, queen, has seen Queen in concert. And number three, said his first words at 11 months. I don't think he's seen Queen in concert. Nope. Does that know you have seen Queen in concert? Or just what do you think, Dwight? Yeah, that's, that's the lie. Much earlier. Okay. The, the first words in 11 months was the lie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last one for, for Xander. Went to Taylor Swift era concert, works in a motion picture industry, and took his first steps at the NYUU picnic. your cup of tea. <laughs> okay, here's Mag Various. Here we go. Uh, number one, Mag's favorite food is ice cream. Number two, Mag played the viola until at 10th grade. And number three, Mag is allergic to vinegar. Yes. Yes. The first one was Mag's favorite food is ice cream. Okay, number two, or, uh, also for Mac. Uh, Mac's first words were, all done. <laughs> Mac, uh, number two, Mac's favorite sport is mini golf. And number three, Mac enjoys shopping for antiques. Yeah. Um, no. Oh, is it, is it your favorite sport is mini golf? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, last one for Mag. Mag likes fall more than summer. Mag's favorite TV show is Young Sheldon, and Mag hates watermelon candy. Can I guess? Yes. I, I think Mag likes watermelon candy. Nope. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> okay, here's Dwight's, uh, Dwight Robinson's. Number one, can speak fluent German. Number two, works in the kitchen at the restaurant, at a restaurant. And number three, will be attending Oakland Community College in the fall. I think speaking German. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay, number one, built a computer as an elective. Number two, loves mornings and is an early bird. Number three, has two, has two younger siblings. 
two. Yeah, it's not, not an early bird. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> okay, last one. Um, this is for Dwight. Finished high school at 17. Number two, wants to be an investment banker. And number three, plays drums with an African dance group. Trina, what do you want? What do you say? Three. Yeah. <laughs> Does not play drums with an African dance group. <laughs> okay. Thank you for playing with us. Well, now we know our seniors a little better, except now I'm always going to have it in my head that Dwight speaks fluent German. Folks, each week, Northwest UU shares its plate contribution with a community partner, and this month that community partner is Black Lives of UU. The social justice team selected Black Lives of UU, uh, and it is committed to expanding the power and capacity of Black UUs within Unitarian Universalism, providing support, information, and resources for Black Unitarian Universalists, and justice-making and liberation for Black people through our faith. All undesignated do donations will be split between Black Lives of UU and our congregation. You can give in a variety of ways that are visible now on your screen. And for those of you here in person, we will pass a collection basket for checks and cash. We honor your generosity by committing to ensure that our collective resources do a greater good for ourselves and our world than any could have done individually. Uh, I'm Mary Mueller, a member of the Northwest Pastoral Care Committee. I want to remind you that anyone needing the support of our community can reach out to our Minister of Pastoral Care, Reverend Teresa Rolk, in the weekly drop-in Zoom room or in one-on-one -on -one appointments by emailing pastoralcare at northwest.uu. Over the next few months, uh, the collective cares of our community will be recorded in our Book of Joys and Sorrows, which will remain on the red cabinet near the name tags. I will read the Joys and Sorrows written in the book today. And um, when I announce your name, please raise your hand. Note that we will have the virtual form available soon for those attending on Zoom. Sally Young. Um, notes that Brooklyn, Uriah, and Mom Trina 
hosted a lemonade stand at our May 18th garage sale. They raised almost $40 for Northwest UU. I'm so grateful. And Dorothy Amberger recently went to Utah to visit her grandson, wife, and new baby, great-granddaughter. It was a joyous occasion. For these and the joys and sorrows that are held in the silent sanctuary of our hearts, I offer this prayer. Keep watch with those who work or watch or weep this night. May the suffering be soothed, may the sick be tended, may the weary find rest, may the dying and those who love them find peace, may the joyous be shielded, and may all know that we are surrounded in a love that is with us always, a web that connects us to all that exists. Let's take a few moments of silence to be with each other in this sacred space. We will come out singing Spirit of Life. I always wonder if the adults in congregations know what an impact they make on the children amongst us. Sometimes just a word or phrase that someone said to me when I was younger has carried itself through my years and imprinted itself on my theology that I have still with me today. But I think I might have actual proof that it matters because while we were creating the service today, our seeing and I said, what elements do you want in this service? One of the things our senior ask, seniors asked for was advice from the congregation. Those going into adulthood want to know from you adults who they know share their values. What advice would you give when going out into the world? So we have set up three pieces of paper around the sanctuary, one for each senior, and near the piece of paper, there is a basket full of markers. We're going to play a slideshow with pictures of our seniors, and Alex is going to play a variation on the children's blessing. And we will ask you all to write your advice to seniors. We're going to have about five or six minutes to do this. But if you don't get to all three of them, we are going to leave these up so that you can do it after the service and after the congregational meeting, because we want to make sure that you speak to all three seniors. They've asked for your wisdom. May you give it to them.
As those of you who are finishing up, I want to remind you that these will be up um, throughout the day today and maybe some time afterwards. So we don't necessarily need to get to them all. But uh, we, we do necessarily need to get to them all, but maybe not right in this moment. Uh, I would like at this time to invite up Mag, who is going to give us a presentation. Can I just say what a delightful, delightful human it is when you ask a teenager, like, what do you want to do? And they're like, a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right, so uh, I made a PowerPoint presentation because I wanted to. Um, and to start you off, I have this inspirational quote. A journey is worth a thousand words. Um, I, I can't quite remember like who said this. I think it might have been like Gandhi or MLK maybe. Oh, no, it was me. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Okay. <laughs> So that was just to set the tone and also to showcase my amazing graphic design skills. Okay, so this is about uh, collecting and, and all my various little collections that I own and what I think it means to be a collector of items. <laughs> so I wrote a bunch of words about collecting rocks and now I'm gonna say them because I want to. <laughs> uh, so I feel like a lot of people, especially those with an innate fondness for the visual beauty of the natural world and a soft spot for what some might call tedious and repetitive activities, have had the shared experience of searching for and collecting rocks and minerals and various little specimens of nature ever since they were young. Although it's not for everybody, many of us are perfectly content spending a day at the beach combing the shores for the rocks and shells that we find prettiest or most interesting. Maybe, like me, you can't remember a time when you didn't enjoy collecting rocks from time to time. Or, as you mature and gain perspective on the world, maybe you've found yourself paying more attention to the little things. When I find myself at a rocky lake shore and start combing through all the different shapes and colors before me, I look closely at each one of them, noting how different they can be and how similar too. I imagine the extremely long process every one of these rocks went through to get to this beach in the exact shape and size that they're in right now. And I'm always in awe of how magnificently complex rocks can be close up, when you might not think twice seeing thousands of them together on a beach. In this world where most things we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis are manufactured or processed, it's very cathartic to just take a moment to touch and hold these objects that are a part of something far bigger than you or I, objects that have preceded us and will outlive us, objects that at no point will be affected in any meaningful way by our existence. I think it's a very peaceful thought that there are so many things in this big world that will never even be aware of your existence. No matter how hard you mess up, that rock that you once picked up at the beach and discarded back into the water, will be none the wiser. And uh, some people might find that uh, terrifying, but I think it's kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, that's my notes about uh, collecting rocks. Very, got very deep and introspective there. <laughs> uh, so this is my rock collection on the right side. I took some up close pictures. Um, collecting rocks can teach you how to recontextualize things, in my opinion. <laughs> and just for anybody who doesn't know what that word means, because it's pretty big, uh, it just means like place or consider in a new or different context, or in other words, like see things in a different light, in a different way. Um, so if you saw these rocks sitting on the ground in your backyard or at the park, you might see them as boring and useless, just like any old rock, uh, like on the left side. I mean, that's like, you'll see that everywhere you go, just a bunch of rocks on the floor. 
<laughs> on the ground. <laughs> but if you look closer, you'll see that there's so much to admire in every little rock. <laughs> uh, the moment you pick it up, it becomes something to you. You don't have to spend a lot of money for a collection to be meaningful. So a lot of people have collections of just like found objects and, you know, so things some people might consider to be junk can can have a, a meaning to you. And here's just bigger a display of my beautiful rocks. <laughs> so yeah, these are some of the like found uh, object collections I found on the internet. And it's like a lot of these objects you might just see like discarded on the sidewalk. You might just look at it and be like, that's just trash. But if you if you like pick them up and put them in a collection, I don't know, it can it can be pretty cool. <laughs> um so I believe that uh a collection kind of can grow as you grow. Uh it can be like an ever evolving reflection of your experiences, kind of like a scrapbook. You add new things to it every once in a while to, um, to remember the things you were doing or how you were feeling. Um, and over time, you might fall out of love with some pieces in your collection. And you should be unafraid to leave them behind if need be. Um, so I think that's kind of what sets uh, collecting things apart from like hoarding. <laughs> like hoarding is kind of like uncontrollable. It just has no end. But collecting is like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's purposeful. And I, I put this picture of these like baby teeth. I'm sorry if that bothers anybody, but like it kind of just shows how like um, as you grow, you add more things to your collection. And it just kind of tells a story. And also with a garden, every year uh, the flowers might die and you'll have to depart with them. It might be sad, but then you'll know that next year you can plant new flowers. Maybe they'll be different. Maybe you'll plant some of the same flowers you had the year before, but it's just about like being at peace with things in your collection uh, leaving you. And you might not really think of a garden as a collection, but I think it kind of counts because it's, I mean, it's just kind of like a temporary collection. Uh, certain things may seem insignificant and worthless on their own, but they have the potential to be turned into something really cool, like an art piece or a piece of jewelry or even clothing. So I have this, uh, I've been collecting like pop tabs from the top of like soda cans. Um, and I, right now it's kind of small compared to, you know, this amount on the right side, but uh, one day I want to make something really cool with them. And as you can see, there's a lot of cool things you can make with, with these items. And on their own, it's kind of like just junk. Um, but if you collect enough of them, you can make something really cool out of them. And I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, this is where we're going to get introspective again. Uh, not only do we collect physical things that we can hold and see and touch, we also collect memories. <laughs> We also collect memories and ideas that we carry with us. As time goes on, we might shed these things, just like in our physical collections. Um, I think that, like, uh, you know, we carry so many memories with us, and we might be scared when some of them uh, fade and we forget certain things, but I think it's kind of cool because I think it just means that you're making new memories. And so, you know, that relates to your uh, ever-evolving nature of a collection, and uh, here we have some uh, keychain, like a keychain and a uh, charm bracelet. And I think that kind of shows how like um, you collect new experiences as you live your life, and you kind of carry them with you. And yeah, and in the bottom right, uh, there's uh, some people take like samples of like dirt and sand from like different places they visit, and they like keep them in a collection. And that kind of uh, is like a collection of their experiences, yeah. <laughs> uh, and finally, to get kind of personal, my collections help me envision a future for myself without getting too overwhelmed. So like, if I think about like big picture things, like, I don't know, just future stuff, I can get pretty overwhelmed and scared. 
but if I'm just thinking about my little trinkets and whatnot, <laughs> uh, it can make me feel a little bit more grounded. Like, um, you know, uh, I have a, a pretty cool uh, collection of plushies and I'm just excited for uh, what, how it may grow and, and finding new plushies. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense, but <laughs> uh, I encourage everyone to start a collection if they don't already collect something. I'm sure like, I feel like a lot of people collect some things and they don't even realize it. Um, but if you do have a collection, then I encourage you to continue to work on it. And yeah, I just think it's a really nice way to like uh, ground yourself. Um, and it's kind of a very primal urge to gather and collect things and sort them. It's not for everybody, but you know, I don't know. I take a lot of, uh, I, I get a lot of uh, meaning out of it, I guess. <laughs> And here's a bunch of pictures of collections that I found online that I think are really cool examples. We've got like bones and these like different like bubble wands, which is like weird but cool. <laughs> and like dolls and mugs and all sorts of things. Uh, so yeah, and this is a picture of a really cute cat with a, a bouncy ball collection. And, and this photo that I really like. I just really like this photo. Okay, that's all. <laughs> Such good stuff. Folks, it is time for the bridging ceremony now, and I'm gonna need everybody's help. First, I would like to ask the bridgers and their families to come forward. I would like Eva to join me up here. And Alex is already here. He's gonna represent our young adults today. <laughs> so please come forward, look out at the congregation. Anybody who wants to come can be up here. This is great. This is great. Look at this. You're present, fashionable. It's wonderful. The bridging process is intended. Wait, can I have our three bridgers like come right here? Amazing. We're going to ask you a series of questions. You ready? It's a test. The bridging process is intended to honor transition, the bridge from youth to adulthood. Unitarian Universalists understand that significant transitions uh, in our lives are to be celebrated, and this is one of them. This is not a farewell, but rather a celebration of transformation from youth to adulthood. Today, we recognize and honor these three bridgers. They are on the cusp of so many things in life, ready to assume the challenges of young adulthood. And on this day, Dwight, Xander, and Mag, your religious community recognizes you as adults. You are now worthy to be granted the privileges as well as the responsibilities of adulthood and full membership in this community. Today, Dwight, Mag, and Xander, you are stepping beyond and away and forward or toward. Today, we share in your journey and encourage your discovery. As you go, you will take with you lessons, friendships, memories gained at Northwest Unitarian Universalist Church. If you will say, if so, you, if, sorry, if so say, we will.
We have looked up to you and learned from you in our religious education program. Will you walk the path of adulthood, setting an example uh, that we might follow? If so, say we will. We welcome you into the fellowship of adulthood. We promise to commit, create community for you and connections beyond the youth culture you come from. Will you reach out to us if you are seeking UU community in the days ahead? If so, say we will. You are Unitarian Universalists. Our faith helped form, to form you, and it is made stronger because of you. As you begin your journey into adulthood, will you live the principles and values of our faith to the fullest of your ability? And when you struggle, as we all do from time to time, will you remember that you have a religious community here waiting for you, where you will be welcomed and cherished just as you are whenever you may need it? If so, say we will. All right. Then I would like to ask the community here today to form the actual bridge that the Bridgers will bridge down. So I would ask the families and the Bridgers to go down to that end of the sanctuary near the doors. And also at that end of the sanctuary, I would ask anyone who is a child or a youth, someone who has not yet bridged, to go down and stand over at that end of the bridge. Anyone is a child or a youth, anyone who wants to. And I would also ask that anyone who feels like they are a younger adult, you don't have to be a technical young adult, to come over here and stand with us next to Alex. I mean, maybe Jason, Justin, come on up here, come on up here. So they are bridging from youth to young adulthood. All right. <laughs> Trina, Justin, come on. Come on, around, around here you count, Trina, come on. <laughs> I, said re I said relative, I said relative. <laughs> all right, all right, yes. Like, mo millennial cuspers, millennial cuspers, we'll take it. And for everyone else, Will you either, or a, a number of you, if you feel comfortable standing, will you come and stand on either side of the aisle and form a bridge? Yes, like, no, you don't have to like, do, no, 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 just, just hold out your hands like this. We, we need some more people over here. And if somebody feels like they need to sit, that's fine. Can we make... Folks, if somebody needs to sit, like maybe we can make space for Dorothy to sit next to somebody over here. Or maybe Dorothy doesn't need to sit. I don't know. I kind of want to sit. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay. So... One at a time. Kids, you're just there to like send them off. So one at a time, I'm gonna ask our bridgers to walk down the bridge made by their community. You may, as they pass, whisper blessings and encouragement. Any touching must be initiated by the bridgers. <laughs> so if they reach out to give you a hug or a high five, great. If not, Let's let them initiate the touching, <laughs> yes. Any touching must be initiated by the Bridgers, but words of encouragement and smiles are most, most welcome. One at a time, I'm going to ask them to reach, to walk down, receive their gift of a chalice from Eva, our Director of Religious Education, and know that once you cross this barrier, you are in the eyes of Unitarian Universalism and Northwest an adult.
Dwight, Xander, and Mags, as you step forward into your next chapter, we send you with our fondest hopes and blessings. Mag, I wrote it wrong. It's Mag, it's not Mags. May life bring enough challenge to fuel your dreams, enough affirmation to honor your gifts, and enough nurture to give your spirit peace. Believe in your vision, follow your dreams, and always know that when you return to us, here you will find friends and community. Congratulations. Congregation, will you join me in blessing our Bridgers by saying, we bless you. We, bless you. we, love, you. we love you. May your life unfold with joy. Give them one more round of applause. You can remain standing as you are or at your seats. And we're going to sing our closing hymn, uh, number 1028, Fire of Commitment. extinguish our chalice today. I don't think I've made it through a bridging ceremony without crying. To extinguish our chalice today, I'd like to invite Xander up. But before I do, I want to tell one more story. When we were planning this, uh, we were deciding which hymns 
to select and they were throwing out hymns that they liked and hymns that fit the theme and we're in the room and Xander leans in and he goes I am a great and fiery force <laughs> and it didn't make it into the order of service today but I felt the story should be present in the room so to extinguish our flame today I would like to invite up our great and fiery force Xander Weiss We will now extinguish our chalice. Please repeat after me. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of hope. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of hope. The warmth of community. The warmth of community. Or the fire of commitment. Or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Within each of our hearts, there is a most glorious light. Go forth and let its spark help you. Understand what troubles both you and others. Go forth and let its light of reason be a guide in your decisions. Go forth and bring its ray of hope to those in need to help in both body and in spirit that they may find healing. Go forth and fan the flames of passion to help heal our world. Go forth and spread the warm glow of love, pushing back the darkness of the world. Go forth and share your glorious light with the world. Our postlude is a music video chosen by Mag Various, and it is called Caro, is that right? Caro, Caro Bonito. <laughs> <laughs> 